Let's look at it. All right, we are live. Well, good evening, Foolish for Christ. I see you here already. <laughs> All right. Amen. Prayerfully, you guys are doing well today. Uh, we bring you greetings from the Church of God Mission. Going to give some more saints some time to log in. If you want to get a shout out, you can type a message so we can see you're here. But we're thankful for you being here tonight. All the same. Um, again, we bring you greetings from the Church of God Mission in Jonesboro, Georgia. Pastor Janice Larry is the pastor. Uh, we meet on Sunday mornings, but right now we postponed our services due to the COVID-19. But we meet traditionally on Sundays, 9.30 a.m. for Sunday school, 11 a.m. for church service. But for now, you can watch us online on the church's YouTube channel at 11 a.m. And we also um, traditionally will meet Wednesday nights at 7.30. But for now, we are doing Wednesday night live at 8 p.m which you see here. Hello, Brother Darion, Sister Leah, Sister Tawana, glad you guys are here. All right, amen. Sister Kachiri, glad you're here too as well, amen. So we wanna go over um, our prayer requests and prayerfully you guys are remembering these requests and we'll continue to do so. Um, we wanna ask that you pray uh, for the divide in our nation right now, as many people um, are going through and some may be going back and forth over um, political positions or racial positions, whatever else it may be, we want to remember that. Um, remember the country Africa, uh, the continent Africa, I said the country, the continent Africa, uh, many countries in Africa as a whole. Uh, for those who don't know, it had been rumored that China and um, France was planning on trying to test the COVID-19 vaccinations and experiment with the, China, uh, with the Africans there in Africa. So we need to pray um, against those type of things. Hello, Monique, how you doing? Glad you made it, all right? We also want you guys to pray for our economy. Um, pray for those that are laid off and let go. A lot of companies are closing doors right now. So we need to pray for um, our economy and for those that have lost jobs, those that may not be able to provide uh, for their families and for any saints they may be going through financially, we need to be praying. Um, let's remember to pray for our country as a whole with the uh, election, presidential, and all these, just pray for them. And remember the saints around the world that are suffering, going through. Uh, many uh, may be called to be martyrs for the gospel in other countries that are hostile to the message of Christ. We will always remember them in prayer as well. All right. Hello, Sister Betty. Glad you made it also. So prayerfully, you guys will remember these requests as we um, prepare to uh, open up in prayer. And after the prayer, you'll be hearing from our very own Pastor Larry. So let us all be agreed. Father, we thank you for blessing us to come together tonight. We thank you, Lord, for those that have already chimed in and those that intend to watch or may have even been watching now and to get their message yet. We pray in the name of Jesus that, Lord, you would bless, Lord, the video, that, Lord, all those who see Father God would be able to dig deep into your word and it will be a blessing. We pray that you bless, Father God, your messenger, that, Lord, the word would come down, Father God, like a sweet rain, Father God, and that your people would be blessed, Father God, and that, Lord, lives would be enriched and changed, Father God, by the power of the teaching of the gospel. We pray and rebuke against the devil and bind his power and any type of technical difficulties or issues he may try to bring up. We plead the blood against it and pray right now in the name of Jesus that, Lord, it would be a blessing to all who view. Lord, remember, Father God, the request that we've uttered tonight. Remember our family members that may have been sick or those that had to do surgeries, Lord. We pray in the name of Jesus yes, that you Lord. heal bodies. And Lord, even remember us during this time, Lord, of sickness with the COVID-19. Bless as only you can. And it's in Jesus' name we pray and we thank you. Amen. 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 Thanks, All Lord. right. Amen. Thanks, and with so that, Lord. we're going to hand it off to Pastor Larry. Amen. amen. Thank you, Micah. All right. No problem. Well, we praise the Lord tonight. Um, I want to say good evening, good people. I pray that your day has gone well for you, that you had a good day in spite of what's going on in the nation and what's going on in the world. I always go before the Lord I, to seek him, what should I say to the people? And certainly he blessed me this morning. And uh, I just thank him. I had been thinking on the subject, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. And though I, I've done lessons on that before, I just didn't know which way you wanted me to go. 
Uh, but the Spirit of God began to speak this morning. Amen. <clears throat> but before I get uh, into the lesson tonight, I just want to say one of the things that um, really is guiding, uh, I believe, the Church of God mission right now is the fact that so many people are dying. Uh, the Bible talks about the evil day. And I believe that we are in that evil day and that we are witnessing uh, so many souls that are going into eternity. And I don't know if they're prepared to meet their maker. Mm -hmm. And it, it troubles us. It should trouble all of us that are in the church that Jesus built. I was, uh, the word of the Lord came to me in the year 2000. And he showed me some things in visions and dreams. And one of the things that he showed me was there was going to come um, a situation on the earth and that major changes were going to come mm -hmm. and that a lot of people were going to die. And there was so much death all around. And the, the voice came from heaven and he said the only safe place is in the church. Amen. And so being that God said that to me and he's followed really the, the, the prophecies and the things that he showed me uh, back in the year 2000, they certainly did come to pass. And now we are witnessing all this death around us. And so I believe the church has obligation, every minister, every preacher, every teacher has obligation to make sure that we get the word out so that people uh, can have a hope. Um, people need to have a hope of a life beyond the grave. And um, that's our job, that's what we do. And so with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and get into our lesson. Uh, and because people need to understand the word of God and they need to understand what the church is and what the church is not. Amen. And so, Tonight, we're going to be dealing with understanding the difference between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. Amen. In Hosea 4 and 6, God said, for lack of knowledge, my people are destroyed. Amen. And so it behooves us to give ourselves to learning, to understanding, and allowing the spirit of God to teach us. Amen. So that as we weather the storm of death and and the, the things that are come on from this earth, that we'll know um, how to order our steps or, or we know how to let God order our steps. Amen. Through these things. Amen. When we talk about the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God as a whole is God's platform in the world for preaching and teaching the truth of his word. Many people use platforms. Uh, we have people that are on the radio, they have their platform for speaking whatever they want to speak. Mm -hmm. We have people that have their nighttime television or daytime television, mm -hmm. and they use their platform to get out their agenda and whatever they want to do. Yeah. And so I'm just breaking it down and make it plain to you. God has a platform too. And, in, and the, the platform that he uses to get his word across. It says the kingdom of God, that his platform uh, that he uses is the church, Amen. is the church, amen. And in the church, you're gonna find the word of God is gonna be either preached or it's gonna be uh, taught. Mm -hmm. And the word of God, the church of God, the kingdom of God, it is the church that Jesus built, amen. which is not brick and mortar, but it is made up of the born-again, spirit-filled believers. It is universal Amen. and has no geographical fixed location. Amen. Amen. So it's the church that Jesus built. It, it is universal. It has no geographical fixed location. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 35 calls them the wayfaring people. Amen. When we read uh, Isaiah 35, and it tells us that a highway shall be there mm -hmm. and a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. Amen. As you read through that, it said, and it shall be for the wayfaring people or the wayfaring man. Yeah. 
Yes. And what wayfaring means is that they have no certain dwelling place. Where Jesus is is where they want to be. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. They could meet in a house. They can meet uh, in a hotel. They can meet in a nice edifice building called church or yes. church building. And um, in the olden times, they met, they met in caves. Sometimes they had to go in hiding. And sometimes they met out in the fields. Amen. And so wherever the spirit of the Lord is, amen, wherever Christ is, that's where you'll find his church. Yes. Amen. They don't have to be in a church building. That where Jesus is, is that's where they want to be. Mm -hmm. We, through the this Bible study, will help you to know the difference between the two, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. Yes, they are one and the same. But when the Lord talks to us about the kingdom of God, he puts a certain light on the kingdom of God. And then when he talks about the kingdom of heaven, he uses it in parables, saying the kingdom of heaven is like unto. And so we're going to uh, go through the scriptures and try to unfold uh, why he uses it in, in different uh, settings or in different lights. Amen. Amen. And this will help us to gain understanding um, not only of what he what is meant by the, the difference in the two, but once we learn, it will also open up our understanding for the parables. Amen. And not only the parables, parables, but it will also open up our understanding for a lot of the uh, scriptures that are in the Old Testament. Just having that kind of understanding, uh, it opens up a door for us to yes. understand the word of God. I like to start off with uh, Matthew 16, uh, the 16th chapter, and uh, you we're going to read some of it, maybe not all of it, but I want to start off reading the latter part of verse 13. And it's when Jesus was walking the face of the earth and he was asking the disciples, he said, who do men say I am? Um, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? And they said, thou art John the Baptist. Some say you're Elias and some others say that you're Jeremiah. And then the Lord uh, looked to Peter and he said, well, who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, son of the living God. Amen. And Jesus answered and said unto him, blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my Father, which is in heaven, has revealed that to you. Mm -hmm. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. Amen. And so Jesus was asking that question. He was asking the question he already knew the answer to. But he was asking that question for us. And so when Peter let him know that thou art the Christ, son of the living God, mm -hmm. then Christ let him know, you don't, you don't know that by yourself. Amen. The only way that you know that is my father has revealed that to you. Mm -hmm. And so when uh, Peter said that, when Christ said upon this rock, he was simply stating that upon this precept, he didn't say he was building the church on Peter. He right. was saying, I'm building the church on this precept, on this principle, mm -hmm. that it's going to take God to reveal to the world who I am. Amen. Amen. The Bible says that no man cometh to the Father except he draw right. him. Amen. Amen. And then when we look in St. John 4 and 24, it said God is a spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And then it goes on to say, for God seeketh such to worship him. Mm -hmm. So it is God who draws us to him. It is God who is a free spirit and he's out in the world. Amen. Yes, Not amen. only in the church, but he is seeking out souls that will have faith in him. Amen. And he's calling them to himself. 
I share with the uh, congregation many times, and I'll share with you, uh, all of the listening audience, those of you that may have given your heart to Christ or for some reason <clears throat> uh, you feel led to, to get your life right or go to church, amen. That is the Lord drawing you. Amen. That's how that works. I was not brought up in the church. Uh, we didn't, uh, my grandmother maybe would take me some time, but we weren't a church family. But there came a time in my life when I decided, you know, I want to go to church. I want to find out about my creator. I want to find out um, who I am and why I'm here. And then I heard uh, just bits and pieces here and there that if I didn't get baptized, I was going to go to hell. And then that really put a fire upon me. And I started, uh, I, get, I would get ready. I think I was about 13 or 14. I would get up on Sunday morning, get my clothes on, and go try to find me a church to go to. Amen. Amen. And I did, but I kept on searching till I found it. But my point is this: that Jesus was talking to Peter, letting him know upon this precept, on this principle, mm -hmm. I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And so, loved ones, if you haven't found him, and those of you that are seeking, the Bible says, knock and it shall be opened, seek and you shall find, ask and it shall be given. Mm -hmm. And it tells us to seek him out in the acceptable time. And so seek him out if you don't know him. He is real. And I was, I was sharing with um, one of my relatives the other day, and they were saying that they weren't religious. And I was letting them know, well, I'm not religious either. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because mm -hmm. I'm saved. I, I've been born again. And uh, I came to Christ through salvation. And so you don't want to be religious. Amen. You want true salvation where God delivers you from sin. Amen. But Jesus said, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against her. Amen. Praise God. Now, we're going to talk about how to become a part of the kingdom that Jesus built. And it is the church, amen, amen. but it's not brick and mortar. And we're going to talk more about that. If you look at St. John 3, 3 through 7, and I'm going to ask Micah if he would read for me um, to help uh, bring in uh, the thought. Right. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except the man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Amen. Thank you, Micah. And so... Nicodemus came to Jesus by night, and he was, I guess, trying to find out about the kingdom of God. And Jesus just told him up front, he said, you must be born again. Amen. But he let him know also that except you're born again, you cannot even see the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. And so we just have to come to God through Jesus Christ by faith. And you won't understand all of it, uh, but you'll understand it by and by. But we can't even see the kingdom of God until we are born again. Amen. There's a song that we sing, Amazing Grace, that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. And it's not until you give your heart to God that God takes the blinders off. He takes the veil off your face so that you can understand. Uh, what the kingdom of God is, and then you begin to see the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. And then he went on to say to to Nicodemus because, and 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 that's it's very clear to be understood even in those passages where Nicodemus he had blinders on. He he wanted to know can a man enter his mother's womb, and mm -hmm. Jesus just let him know, except you be born of the water and of the Spirit, you cannot even enter into the kingdom of God. That's right. Amen. So there, it is a church, 
but it's not a church made of uh, brick and mortar. It's not a building, amen, that we can right. see. Praise God. <clears throat> and so he went on to say, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. Amen. Amen. And we hear scriptures that tell us to seek ye first the kingdom of God and all its righteousness. Mm -hmm. And then all the things that we need, he didn't say we won't, but all the things we need can be added unto us. Amen. Letting us know that it must be a desire in us that Above all of this world, Christ is who we want. God is who we want. Amen. Amen. And so when we're willing to sell out like that, then we can find him. He's not very far from us. Mm -hmm. Even though the kingdom is a spiritual kingdom, its members, they are made up of visible people. All right. Amen. The kingdom is a spiritual kingdom, but it's made up of visible people people. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so when we read back in prophecy, the Bible tells us that when Jesus come, come it lets us know that he is going to be uh, born of a virgin. And it tells us that the government is going to be upon his shoulder Amen. to order it and to establish it. Amen. With judgment. Amen. And with justice henceforth and forever. And it says that the zeal of the Lord is going to perform it. Yes. So it was in prophecy that Jesus was going to build the church. But he says that the government is going to be what? Upon oh, his shoulder. shoulder. Amen. Amen. And so when we come to God through the new birth, being born again, we've asked the Lord to forgive us for our sins. We quit the sin business. We turned away from that which is wrong. And we want to do what's right. Amen. The Bible says that if your right hand offends you, cut it off. Amen. If your eye offends you, he said, pluck it out. Amen. And he didn't mean for you to literally cut it off or pluck it out. He just means those things that are offensive to God, we're going to put it away. And so when you give your heart to God, you have to have a made up mind. And it's a conscious decision that I want to change the way that I'm living. I want to change the things that I do that are offending God. I want to walk upright before him. Amen. And so when you come to him and you ask him to forgive you for your sins mm -hmm. and come into your life, that's it. You're born right. again. But you're born into the kingdom of God. Yes. And we're going to talk about that and what that means. Uh, when we look at 1 Peter Two verses four and five. All right. To whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious, ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. Amen. And so what we want to understand right here, he says that we are built up a spiritual house. Amen. And so even though you, uh, it's a spiritual house, it has visible members. Amen. We belong to the kingdom of God when we have been born again. Yes. You know, we are those that are alive from the dead. And he says that we are a living stone. Praise God. Amen. And we are a spiritual house. And it says to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Amen. Mark 10 and 15 says, Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he should not enter therein. Amen. And letting us know that we have to humble ourselves when we come to God. You cannot come to God with the mindset that, um, you know, I, I know how to think for myself and that's okay. God is not going to take that from you, but you need to have the mindset that not to lean to your own understanding. You have to have the mindset that you're going to put all your trust in God and you're going to depend on him. Amen. The 
the warfare that we're in is a serious warfare. Yes. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness in high places. And you are no match for Satan. Mm -hmm. You're no match for him. And uh, until you submit yourself to the will of God, you know, let God uh, walk in you and talk in you. Let him fight your battles. Let him be your wisdom. Amen. 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 You, you're not going to make it. And so that's why he tells us to lean not to our own understanding. So we have to come to him like little children, looking to see, Lord, what you want me to do? Lord, what you want me to say? Lord, what would you have me to do or be in your kingdom? You don't decide that. God decides that. Amen. And so he's saying to us that whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. My God. Now we're going to ask uh, Micah if he would read Mark 10 and 23. That's all right. Mark 10, 23. And Jesus looked round about and said unto his disciples, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? And his disciples were astonished at his words. But Jesus answereth again and said unto them, Children, how hard it is for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Amen. Thank you. Thank Amen. you, Michael. And one of the prerequisites to being saved is self-denial. Jesus said, if any man come after me, let him what? Deny Amen. himself, Amen. pick up his cross and follow me. And so we might as well get ready. You know, it's an adventure to walk with the Lord, but you have to live in self-denial. And Amen. that's that's not just to get saved. That's every day. You have to learn how to deny yourself and wait on God. And if you wait on him, you'll find that he'll be there for every situation. He won't leave you to yourself, but he'll be there for you. Amen. There was a rich young man, and I talk about this story um, quite often, but there was a rich young man that went to Christ and wanted to know what must he do to uh, be, be saved. And Jesus told him, said, go and sell all you have and give it to the poor. Mm -hmm. But because this flesh was so attached to the things of this world, because he was, I guess, enjoying his riches, he didn't want to let it go. All right. And so we have to be willing to let everything go. Amen. And if God says so, give it to him. Praise the Lord. I can tell, share some stories, but we're going to keep moving with our lessons. But you can't beat God given. Amen. You can't beat him given. And it doesn't matter how much you give. God is going to bless you uh, richly. He will give you back sometimes a hundredfold times 50 fold. But um, he does require us to deny ourselves, to let things go. And we have to just lay it at his feet. Praise the Lord. Amen. If you turn your Bibles uh, to Colossians 1, 12 through 14, trying to get through this lesson, but there's so much scripture. And I hope that you're writing these scriptures down so that you can study uh, and get more familiar, get understanding. And this is what this is. We're not preaching. We're doing Bible study. Amen. And so if you write these scriptures down and you go back and study, the Holy Spirit will help you to put it all together. Amen. Amen. But right now we're going to go to Colossians 1, 12 through 14. All right. Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who have delivered us from the power of darkness and have translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, mm -hmm. in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Micah. Amen. And so we hear, we hear in the book of Colossians where Paul is writing, he said, give thanks to the Father mm -hmm. who has made us met, he made us fit to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Amen. Who have delivered us from what? The power of darkness. Yes. Did you know that when we were not saved, we didn't have any say so? The devil is the prince in the power of the air. Amen. And so he was free to influence our minds, to make us angry, to provoke us to jealousies, 
to to rap, to fight, to steal. We didn't have any say so in the matter. And so we thank God that he delivered us from the powers of darkness. But then he says, and have what translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. And when you think about being translated, translated means to remove or change from one place or form to another, Amen. to a non-temporal condition without death. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so we are translated into the kingdom of God. And that's what I mean where it is a spiritual house. It's a spiritual kingdom, Amen. but you are a visible person that can be seen. And so when we are translated into the kingdom, there are protections, there are blessings that uh, become ours automatically. We are heirs and joint heirs with Christ. And so we have access into his grace. We have God's protection uh, all around us. If we turn to uh, Ephesians 2, 1 through 10, uh, it helps us to get a better understanding of that being translated into the kingdom of God. Amen. And you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin. Yes. Where in time past he walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. And so we were just, that's how we were. Uh, uh, sometimes people call uh, those that get saved, they think they're better than others. That's not true. It's just that the things that we used to do that were wrong, that offended God, we don't want to do that anymore because Amen. we were out there too, fulfilling the lust of the flesh and mm -hmm. the mind, uh, doing things that God didn't approve of. Mm -hmm. But now he saved us and he delivered us from that. At verse four, but God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, yes. has quickened us together with Christ. By grace are you saved and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Hold it. And so here we go again. It's a spiritual house. And so we've been translated into the kingdom of his dear son. And here we find, he says, and have raised us up together and made us sit together in what? Heavenly places in Christ Jesus. There's a song we used to sing. Well, we still sing it. Raised from sin to royal honor. Amen. Even reigning Lord with thee. I believe it's called reigning in this life. Amen. Amen. But he made us to sit together in heavenly places. We're no longer in the miry clay. We're no longer trampling in the lowlands of sin. And that's why Isaiah said, and a highway shall be there and a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. Amen. Praise the Lord. Meaning that God has a high standard for his people. Yes. He said, my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways and your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. And so when we're translated into that kingdom, we begin to walk up right before God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so we've been made to sit together in what heavenly places? Amen. Read verse seven. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace you saved through faith. Yes. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, yes. lest any man should boast. Right. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Praise God. So we are a spiritual house, but we are visible. We are visible. But there's a spiritual work that has been done in us, translating us into the kingdom of God. We're amen. raised from sin, amen, to newness of life, reigning with Christ. Amen. There's a scripture that uh, I quote very often 
because sometimes people need to understand that uh, the New Testament, uh, surely it was ushered in through Jesus Christ, the new covenant, but there are words of prophecy that prophesied his coming and prophesied what uh, he was going to do. In Isaiah 26 and one, it says in that day, shall this song be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city, praise God. Amen. Salvation will God appoint for walls and bulwarks. Mm -hmm. And so the church that Jesus built, she does not have, uh, what is that? The, the sheetrock <laughs> for right. walls, amen. amen. But he says, God is going to appoint salvation for our walls. Amen. Praise God. And we have a wall of protection around us when we belong to God. Uh, it's in prophecy. He said it was going to happen. And so saints of God, when you give your heart to God, you don't have to fear what the devil is going to do. What you have to do is just have faith in God. As I was uh, studying one uh, other lesson in the book of Habakkuk, Habakkuk um, was uh, one of the minor prophets and he was troubled because of the impeding dangers that were coming against Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to know, Father, you know, how are we going to fare? And he said, he asked God, how are we going to fare? And the, he said, I'm going to stand upon my watch and listen to what he's going to say. And the Lord answered him. And he said, write the vision and make it plain. Amen. And as you follow that in the book of Habakkuk, he said, the just shall live by Amen. their faith. Amen. And so God is saying the same thing to us today. Even though we look out and we see death all around us, we see our nation divided, we see confusion, we see racism, we see trouble on every hand. Mm -hmm. But God is telling his people today, the just shall live by their faith. Amen. Amen. And that was one of the things that he said to me in the year 2000 when he showed me these things that we're now witnessing. He says, there's no safe place but in the church. Amen. No safe place but in the church. Sudden death, sudden glory. Yes. Amen. And people who don't know God, we need to make it our business to try to help them to know the Lord. Amen. There's no safe place but in Christ Jesus. We know it's appointed unto one uh, unto man once to die, but after this, the judgment. Amen. And there are a lot of people who haven't heard anything about the judgment. And we as a church, we're not doing our job if we're not getting the message out there. Praise God. Amen. Loved ones. Uh, uh, now he lets us know that uh, he's going to point uh, for walls, salvation. And in Isaiah 60 and 17, if you read that for me, Micah. All right. Violence shall no more be heard in thy land, wasting nor destruction within thy borders. But thou shalt call thy walls salvation and thy gates praise. Amen. Amen. Under that Old Testament covenant, you know, they had to go to a lot of wars. They had to do a lot of battles. And then sometimes sin got in the camp and, and the Lord wouldn't work over them. But now we're hearing that through prophecy, the church that Jesus uh, is going to build, that he built, he says, violence shall no more be heard in thy land, wasting nor destruction within thy borders. But thou shalt call thy walls, what? Salvation. Salvation. Praise God, praise God. There shouldn't be no fighting in the church. Amen. <laughs> there shouldn't no, be no saints duking it out. Praise the Lord. The Bible even tells us, I dare any of you go to law on one another. Amen. And so we need to uh, recognize who we are because God is our guide. He is our helper. He's our shade on the right hand and on the left. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, Zechariah 2, 4 through 5, Micah. All right. And said unto him, Run, speak to this young man, saying, Jerusalem shall be inhabited as towns without walls mm -hmm. for the multitude of men and cattle therein. For I, said the Lord, will be unto her a wall of fire round about and will be the glory in the midst of her. Praise God, praise God. And he's letting us know I'm your defense. I'm going to watch over you. And didn't he tell us that the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous? 
He watching over us and his ears are open to our prayers. And my, 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 I've been with God over 43 something years and he has always made a way and he's always answered prayer. And I thank him for that. Amen. Amen. So you can't go wrong staying with God. And if you learn him, amen, that's what he says, study to show yourself approved, a workman that need not be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen. We're going to move on to Romans 10, and I'm just going to share a few excerpts out of it. Uh, we shared with you that the church is God's platform for reaching the world, for preaching and for teaching. That's his platform. Um, there's no other institution that God is going to use to preach the gospel. He's going to Amen. use his church. Amen. I don't care who gets up and get a Bible and try to read and try to teach. You've got to be in the kingdom to be Amen. effective, to preach the gospel. And so Romans 10 uh, began with um, verse 14, Micah. All right. How then shall they call on him and whom they've not believed? Mm -hmm. And how shall they believe in him on whom they've not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Amen. So he said, how can they hear in whom they haven't believed? Amen. Amen. And how can they hear? And he says, and how can they hear without a preacher? Amen. And how can he preach except he be sent? Amen. Amen. And so God is going to send his own preachers. He's going to anoint them. He's going to teach them. He's going to tell them what to say. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so then verse 17 says, so then faith cometh by what? Hearing. hearing. By hearing what? The word of God. Praise Amen. God. And so God is setting, uh, he set up his own platform through Jesus Christ. He Amen. knew that he needed to give the message to the nations. And so that's what he said. This gospel shall be preached in all the world and then the end shall come. So God is using his platform and he's looking for those to be just like Isaiah. Isaiah said, uh, here am I, send me. And God is looking for some others to send because Loved one, people are dying. Mm -hmm. it, they're dying. And some of them uh, get the corona and they may get it uh, on a Monday and they may be dead before the weekend is over. Amen. And so we have work to do. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. We have work to do. Amen. And so the, the church is God's platform for getting the gospel, for getting the truth out. Amen. All right. We're going to go to Revelations 21. One through four, and we're going to take our time um, on this one. All right. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. All right, hold it. And so John said he saw a new heaven and a new earth. He wasn't talking about the physical heaven and earth. My God. Uh, when we, well, the Old Testament, as the people of God, they were supposed to represent heaven on earth mm -hmm. just like this uh new testament on the new covenant it's a spiritual house but they're visible people that you can see and so the old testament were to represent the the kingdom of god or right. heaven and they were to be a light to the gentiles that's what they were supposed to be and so it was a piece of heaven on earth the Bible says that when God set up that Old Testament and he told uh, Moses how to set up all of Israel and where to put the tabernacle and so forth. And he said when he got that tabernacle set up, he said God moved into the tabernacle. Amen. And as you can see the Shekinah glory, 
Amen. And that was heaven coming to earth. Amen. Mm -hmm. To be among his people. That's what God wanted. And so John says, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For what? The first heaven and the first earth were passed away. Mm -hmm. In other words, when God brought in the new covenant, that old covenant was done away with. Amen. Praise the Lord. And then he says, and there was no more sea. And so he was not talking about a literal sea. The Bible says that when God made promise to Abraham that his numbers would be as the sand of the sea. But he says here, and there was no more sea. We know the story. We know that because of their disobedience, that God began to cut those numbers down. Amen. It began first with those 10 tribes. And we know that they went into captivity under the Assyrians. And then we were left with Judah and a little bit of Benjamin. Uh, amen. And the scripture goes on to say that though Israel be as the sand of the sea, only a remnant shall be saved. My God. And so what he's simply telling us is that old covenant has been done away with, that uh, old uh, Jerusalem and the, and the uh, wall that uh, protected her, all of that kind of stuff was a shadow of better things that was coming. And so now John has seen that new Jerusalem coming down, praise the Lord, and see the old uh, old covenant, that old church system, it was being done away, and those numbers, and, and you know what? When uh, John the Baptist was at the river of Jordan, mm -hmm. and he was baptizing, and the uh, poor people and the down and outers were there, and he was baptizing them, telling them to repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And so then the Pharisees and Sadducees, they showed up down there too. And he said, who have warned you to flee the wrath to come? He said, therefore, bring forth fruit met for repentance. He says, because the ax is laid at the root. You All see, right. God put up with them because he had to bring the Messiah in. Amen. And after the Messiah was here, John was letting them know the ax is laid at the root now. And so if you want to get in, you're going to have to get in through Christ. Praise the Lord. And so that's why John says that the, the first earth was passed away and there was no more sea. And that's what Jesus meant when he said to the uh, Old Testament church, he said, oh, Jerusalem. Oh, Jerusalem. I would have gathered you as a chick gathers, as a hen gather her chicks. He said, but you would not. He said, therefore, your house is left unto you desolate. Mm -hmm. My God. But God knew and he prophesied through the prophets that a better day was coming. And so John said, I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Praise God. Mm -hmm. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and God himself shall be with them and be their God. You see, God had to be in a tent in the holiest of holies. But now he's saying that I'm going to be their people. And in one scripture, I believe in Hebrews, he says that I will walk in them. I will dwell in them. I will be their God. And they will be my people. Praise Amen. the Lord. And he says, and he's going to wipe away all tears from their eyes. Yes. And there shall be no more death. We're going to die that one time. But the second death is not going to have any power over us. Amen. Praise God. Death is just going to be our transportation into a life of eternal bliss with God. Amen. Did we read all of that, Micah? Let me see. We left off. Uh, as you kind of raise some of the All right. Um, verse four. Oh, verse four. Yes. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and they shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. And you know, we have to 
take God as his word. We have to believe him. Uh, there's a song we sing that, oh, what needless pains we bear. Mm -hmm. Because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Amen. And when we go to him in faith, he will answer. We serve a God who is not man. He's not like man at all. Amen. God is able to answer the prayers of a billion people at one time. God is able to do that. Amen. But that's what makes him God. Amen. I'm glad about it. Praise God. And so he, if we learn how to cast our cares on him, he will care for us. And we don't need to be like the Old Testament church. Um, God was not pleased with them because they didn't have faith. All right. He uh he turned them away because they because they had unbelief. And so we need to believe God and we need to take him at his word. And in times like these, that's when we need to learn how to stand on his promises. Amen. I've learned how to stand on his promises for my healing. I've had I've learned how to stand on his promises for financial difficulty. Amen. I've learned how to how to stand on his promises uh, for my loved ones who will be sick and Especially for my mom, I just lost my mom in February, but it was a journey, and the Lord helped me uh, throughout that journey to win my mom to Christ. Praise God! Amen. And her testimony was that when she uh, was two days before she died, I said, "Mom, are you yet holding on?" And she said, "Yes, Amen." And that just uh, blessed my heart. That just blessed my heart. And so we can trust God, and we can. Uh, we can even pray for our loved ones that are not saved. We can pray for ourselves, amen. We, God will change situations for us. And sometimes when we're going through, amen, and you're so burdened down and you don't know uh, what the end of this thing is going to be that's burdening you down. Sometimes you can just pray and you can say, Lord, I need you to lift my burden. I need you to take this off of me because it, it's, it's heavy on me and I don't want to feel this way. And sometimes the Lord will lift that burden from you. He may not, maybe have not fixed your situation, but he can fix you where you can um, be able to still function in life and still have your joy and still have your peace until he brings about the change. Amen. God is able to do that, do that for us. So there are blessings when we give him a heart and when we are a part of that kingdom. Uh, mm -hmm. When we listen to Paul, Paul is writing to us in the book of Hebrews, the 12th chapter. And I'm going to just see if I can get Michael to help me. I want you to read verses 18. All right. Um, 18 through 19. All right. For ye are not come unto the mount that might be touched and that burned with fire, nor unto blackness and darkness and tempest, and the sound of a trumpet, and the voice of words, which voice they that heard entreated that the word should not be spoken to them anymore. Amen. And so Paul is letting us know back in, um, in uh, Israel's day, when they came to Mount Sinai, and God gave Moses uh, all of the commandments, the laws, and the statutes, uh, they had to come to Mount Sinai and they, them people was about scared to death um, because they saw that uh, mountain on fire and smoking and voices and thunderings. And he's saying that we're not coming to that kind of mountain right now. No, 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 no. We're not coming to, to that mountain where we about have scared to death. But listen to uh, verse 22, Mike, if you pick up. But ye are come unto Mount Sinai and unto the city of the living God the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels. Yes. To the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect. Praise God. And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. Yes. See that ye refuse him not that speaketh. For if they escape not who refuse him that spake on earth, how much more shall not we escape and we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven? Hold it. And so he's letting us know that uh, they didn't pay 
Moses laws a lot of attention. Some of them listened, but a lot of them didn't. And he says, if they escape not who refuse him that spake on earth, how much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven? And see, Jesus is the head of the church. He's the captain of our salvation. He's the bishop of our souls. He knows us better than we know ourselves. Amen. Amen. And he is over the church. He's the one that sets the members in place according as it pleases him. He's the one that gives us our gifts and our callings. Amen. And he helps us to learn how to work out our soul salvation in fear and in trembling. Praise the Lord. And so we need to give ear to what Christ has to say. I'm reminded that when Jesus came out of that uh, baptismal, and the Bible says that God spoke and he says, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. Hear ye him. Amen. And so we need to hear the voice of Christ. And Christ is not dead. He is alive forevermore. Amen. He's not somewhere sitting on the side, stooped with God. He is working. He is working in the kingdom of God. He is working for our behalf. And he's Amen. telling us we need to listen to him. Mm -hmm. All right. Did we do verse 26? Um, so. All right. Whose voice then shook the earth, but now hath he promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. And this word, yet once more, signifies the removing of those things that are shaken, as of things that are made that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Wherefore, we receive a kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us have grace, whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear, for our God is a consuming fire. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Amen. And so we have come to the general assembly of the church that Jesus built. Praise God. And I want you to understand that wherever the body of Christ has assembled themselves, there you have the church. Amen. The church is where Jesus treads the winepress, sifting out the hearts of men before his judgment seat. This is where the word of God should be going forth under the anointing of God's spirit, transforming the lives of people, consuming sin and dross. Amen. This is only accomplished if the word and the spirit have their rightful place in the church. Amen. amen. God never put a man or a woman, amen, to be over the church. He uses them in their several uh, positions or callings. He may call one to be a pastor, evangelist, a teacher, amen, or preacher, but it's the word and the spirit who are over the church. They're the vicars of the church. Amen. Amen. And when they have their rightful place, the church will work like clockwork. There will be order in the church. Praise God. And mm -hmm. from, from the preacher to the usher, amen, everybody that's a part of the church that Jesus built mm -hmm. must be saved. Amen. For the, for the spirit of God to move throughout the life of the congregation they need to be saved. Uh, mm -hmm. God is not going to use someone who's not saved to uh, sing songs. All right. I don't, he doesn't care how beautiful your voice is. He wants you to live a holy life. Amen. If you're ushering on the, on the usher door, he wants you to live a what? A holy mm -hmm. life. He wants your life to tell the gospel story. Amen. Amen. Yes, he wants to use you. But he wants you to give yourself to him first. That's how he gets glory. All right. And we have to make sure that uh, there's an anointing. Because if there's no anointing, the yokes of sin won't be broken. And it's, an, it's the anointing that breaks the yoke. Amen. Let's go to 1 John 2, 23. And 29, we're going to find a place to close, but I want to get these points out so that next week we can deal with the kingdom of heaven because we're dealing with the kingdom of God right now. Amen. Amen. Let that therefore abide in you, which ye have heard from the beginning. 
If that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. Mm -hmm. And this is the promise that he had promised us, even eternal life. These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. Yes. But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you, and ye need not that any man teach you. Hold it. He says the anointing which you have received of him abideth in you. It's the spirit and the word that brings the anointing. Amen. Now, the preacher can preach, the teacher can teach. But it's the spirit of God that brings the anointing Amen. that opens up your understanding of the Bible. Yes. And without them, it's like a closed book. You can mm -hmm. try to repeat what you want to repeat. But without the Holy Spirit's anointing, you don't understand. You just, um, I guess you, what's, what's that, that, um, that stationary bicycle, you just keep pedaling and you're not going nowhere? Mm -hmm. Amen. Treadmill. But, <laughs> treadmill. Yeah. You're just not going nowhere. But if you allow the Holy Spirit and the word of God, because these two are the witnesses, they always agree. And yeah. they will give the pastor his agenda, his assignment, and the ministers that work with that pastor his assignment, and it'll work like clockwork when yeah. the spirit and the word or at the helm of the church. Amen. Praise God. Read. But as the same anointing teach you of all things, and is true, and is no lie, and even as it has taught you, ye shall abide in him. Amen. Again, it's not a man, and it's not a woman. Amen. Jesus said that when we uh, leave this body, that we are neither male nor female. So the anointing is not in the gender. It's in the spirit. And so when we allow the spirit of God to rule and super rule in our lives, he's the one that brings the anointing. Amen. It's not in the gender. So that's why uh, Paul said we're neither male nor female, but we are one in Christ Jesus. And it's the anointing. And so and it's the anointing, amen, that awakens us to righteousness. Whereas before, when we weren't saved, we could tell a lie. We could cut somebody out. We can take something that's not ours. I don't care how big, how small it is. Amen. And you're not aware of that's wrong for you to do. Amen. I'm, I tell you when I got saved, and I didn't get saved till I was 21. And looking back at my life, I could see some areas that I wish I could go back and fix it, but it was too late. I just asked the Lord to forgive me. Praise mm -hmm. God. Right. But you begin to understand that even taking a, a, and this may be small, and you might call me an extremist, but it's, if it's not yours, the ink pen on the job, if it's not yours and you took it, that's like stealing, unless the boss man said you can have it. Amen. Right. I, I don't know if we're going to get an amen, but amen. it's the truth. And so uh, it is the anointing that awakens you to righteousness to do what is right. And mm -hmm. it's the anointing that helps us. The Bible says that we should lay hands suddenly on no man. The Bible right. tells us to judge nothing before the time. Yeah. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says to the pure, all things are pure. But yeah. to them that are not pure, amen, is nothing pure. But even yeah. their very thoughts are defiled. And so when God uh, saves us and cleans us up, it's the anointing that helps us. And, and that's what the Bible says, because the anointing is the Holy Spirit. So he will lead us and guide us into what? All truth. Praise God. Amen. And so, yes, it's, it's not that a man uh, is going to be teaching you, but God uses a man. And it sounds like a paradox that's there because it says, how can they hear without a preacher? How can you preach except they be sent? Well, this is the thing. One may plant, one may water, but it's God who gives the increase. Amen. And when you sit with him after you've been born again, it's the Holy Spirit that comes to you and helps you to know what the will of God is for your life. He Amen. sits with you. There's no man that can sit with you every hour of the day telling you this is right and this is wrong. Amen. It's God who does that for us. He's the one that brings conviction over us and help us to make right decisions. Praise the Lord. And so um, it's the anointing that does the teaching. 
We're going to go to Luke 4, 17 and 18. All right. Luke 4, 17 and 18. Before we go there, I didn't have it in my notes, but I do want to say this. The scripture also tells us, and Mikey, you can tell me where uh, we can find it, but it all says, except the Lord build the house. They that build the house labor in vain that built it. Amen. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman riseth but in vain. Mm -hmm. And so the house that Jesus built is a spiritual house. Amen. And so when that preacher gets up to preach the gospel, he says, except the Lord keep the city, mm -hmm. the watchman riseth but in vain. And so there is a, a oneness there. Mm -hmm. The preacher needs to be saved, filled with the Holy Ghost. And the body of Christ, yes. they need to be filled of the Holy Spirit. And so there's a oneness of God's people so that when the preacher is leading or the pastor is leading, amen, they're understanding and they're being obedient to what thus said the Lord. Amen. Praise Psalm God. That's who? Psalm 127. Psalms 127. Yeah. So the house that God builds for us, amen, and we are part of that house. He said, except he keep the city, they're watching the preacher. He just wasting his time because people not going to obey. And so they need to make sure that they're born again, too. And that preacher needs to make sure that those members that he's admitting, amen, to work in, in the church, in the life of the church, that they're saved, that they are saved. Because you get a bunch of people in there and they're not saved and they're not obedient. You just wasting your time. They run you away from that. Amen. Amen. And so you want to make sure that you the the preacher want to make sure that his preaching is not in vain. All Amen. right, we're still talking about the, the anointing is the spirit of God. And when we look at Luke four and seventeen, uh, Micah is going to read that. And the, Jesus had to have the anointing on him also. Read. Amen. And when he had opened the book. He found the place where it was written, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind and to set and, I'm sorry. And that's it, that, that's good right there. But the part we, we wanted to bring out was that even Christ, uh, uh, said that the spirit of the Lord is what upon me. Amen. And he's the one that brought the anointing to Christ. Amen. Because when Jesus identified himself with us and he took on flesh and blood, then he needed something greater than his flesh and blood. And that's why we see the spirit of God landing upon him in the form of a dove. Amen. Saying, Amen. this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. Because Jesus needed that power. He needed that anointing on his life. And God anointed him to preach the gospel of the kingdom. Mm. Amen. It is the, is the anointing that breaks the yoke again. And it's the anointing that awakens the soul to righteousness. Mm. And so God is using the church as his platform for preaching the truth of his word to all the nations. Um, the Bible says, by the truth. And sell it not. So when we are exhorted and we are exhorted by the scripture to forsake not the assembling of ourselves together. Amen. And so wherever the church is, we need to make sure that we're assembled there so that we can hear the truth of God's word. Amen. And then we hear the, the word of God. He says, buy the truth and sell it not. Mm -hmm. And so once you hear this truth, you have to hold on to the truth. Amen. You have to abide in the truth. Amen. You must not be tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine, but you buy the truth and you hold on to it. Praise God. Uh, in the book of Revelations, uh, there was a church called the La Laodicean Church, and they Amen. thought they were rich and they thought they were great. And Jesus told them, you don't know you're wretched and blind. All he right. said, I counsel you. To buy gold from me, tried in the fire. Amen. Amen. That thou mayest be rich and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that thy shame, the shame of thy nakedness, do not appear. 
and yeah. anoint thine eyes with what? I salve, that thy, thou mayest see. And so this is where we hear truth. The truth of God's words come to correct us. It comes to give us instruction in righteousness Amen. and help us to understand even the doctrine of God. Yes, it may reprove you, but that's where you go to hear the word of God. Amen. Matthew 20 and 16, we're coming to a close. Just bear with me and then we'll be finished. Matthew 20, 16. Yes. For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is a householder, yes. which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. Yes. And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into his vineyard, and he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace. So the last shall be first, and the first shall be last. For many are called, but few are chosen. All right, now. And so in the kingdom, it's also styled as a marketplace. Mm -hmm. And while you're in the kingdom and you're hearing the word of God being preached, he said there were some that were standing idle in the marketplace. And mm -hmm. some of you may not understand that, but let me just break it down for you. Sometimes um, when we give our hearts to God, instead of us uh, being on fire for God, we become pew warmers. That's right. We become pew warmers. We come and warm the seats. We just come in on Sunday. We come in on Wednesday and we go back home. All right. God doesn't want you just being a pew warmer. He wants you to sit at his feet. He wants you to learn the word of truth. But he wants to raise you up so he can use you. Amen. And so he can send you. And so when you read this parable, he said he came and he found some standing where? Idle in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. And he told him, go and work in my vineyard. Go work in my vineyard. He wants you to work for him. Want you to get up off your seat of doing nothing. Amen. And get busy. Get busy for him. Praise the Lord. Because there's a call that goes out to all of us. All of us. But I didn't say it. He said it. Many are called, but few are chosen. Many are called, but few are chosen. And so we it, 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 it uh, behooves us to make sure that we have an ear for the master. We have an ear to hear what he says to us, individually and collectively. I'm reminded that in, in Zerubbabel, God was speaking to him concerning the church coming. And he asked Zerubbabel, what did he see? And Zerubbabel tried to answer the best way he could. And then the Lord said to him in Zechariah 4 and 6, he says, this is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, not by might, not by power, but what? By my spirit. Amen. And so the Lord chose the spirit and the word to be the vicars of the church. And they're the one that gives us our direction, what we should do and what we should say. And so we say unto you, loved ones, in closing, the goal in the kingdom of God is to be filled with the Holy Ghost. God is a great king, for the Lord is a great God and a great king above all God, according to Psalms 95 and 3. And so when Jesus was here, the scribes and the Pharisees asked him, and they said, Lord, when will the kingdom of God come? And Jesus spoke to him, he says, the kingdom of God cometh not with observation. He said, it doesn't come with observation. He says, neither shall they say lo here or lo there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Praise God. And so when we give our hearts to God, God wants to sit on our heart's throne. He wants to live in us. He wants to walk in us. He wants to talk to us. He wants to lead us by his spirit. And so when the kingdom of God comes within us as the people of God, amen, according to the scripture, he says, for the kingdom of God is what? It's not meat and drink, but it's righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Praise God. I want you to take your time and go back and pray, meditate on those scriptures, recognize who you are, who you are, are in God's kingdom, uh, the provisions that he's made for us. And that's why we're preaching and teaching so that we can make sure that we won't fail God 
but we are admonished by him to feed the church of God. Amen. And so we are laboring to feed the church of God. I pray that your hearts are blessed tonight and you have a better understanding of what the kingdom of God is. And so next uh, week, we're going to talk about the kingdom of heaven. I also want to just thank God also for Brother Micah and those that are working with me in ministry. Uh, and him and Sister Amika, they've uh, been helping uh, those of my sons and daughters in the gospel. And I'm still feasting from Sunday's message. Uh, that I call Micah the son of thunder. Didn't he bring the thunder Sunday? He brought the thunder, praise the Lord. It was a good message, praise God. And even uh, his wife, the Sunday before, I, I call her the illustrator, the hammer. <laughs> and myself, I consider myself to be a gentle rain, praise God. But either way, however the Lord uses us, he uses us according to our personalities, but there's an anointing and there's a message that he brings to his people. We thank you for uh, tuning in tonight. God bless you is my prayer. Thank you and just continue to pray for us. Amen.